Hello everyone, I am Prepper Princess. I am the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing this book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. The United States of America is estimated to have about 20 million preppers. While specific reasons for becoming a prepper may differ widely, we can all agree that prepping is a logical, reasonable step in ensuring your safety and security in a grid down scenario. What is a grid down scenario? It might be if an electrical transformer has gone out in your neighborhood, causing all of the electricity to your house to stop for several days. This can be during the hottest or coldest time of the year, and it can be uncomfortable or even deadly, depending on your climate. It could be a natural disaster like a hurricane, earthquake, a tornado, causing all infrastructure to temporarily stop in your city or town. An emergency like this means no electricity, no natural gas, no heat, no air conditioning, gasoline, or communications, because more than likely the cell phone network or towers would be so overrun that you would be unable to make a single phone call. Water pumps no longer have the electricity required to deliver water to your tap. Grocery stores are shut down, boarded up, they're locked. Gas stations do not have the electricity to work the pumps to put gasoline in your gas tank. Over the last five to 10 years, the stereotype of crazy preppers with doomsday bunkers has fallen away. The major demographic is no longer males age 55 to 65, but the majority now are in their mid 20s to mid 30s that live in urban areas that want to know how to weather the storm. Hurricane Sandy in New York happened in 2012, and many had absolutely no provisions set in place. Myself included, it is my belief that we all want to be self-sufficient. We want to know that if everything stopped, we would not only be surviving, but we would be thriving. Most of us, myself included, want no changes in our lifestyle whatsoever if the power goes out, and this is what most of us preppers wish to accomplish. How can this be done? First, of course, is to have food and water on hand or access to water in a way to filter it to make it safe to drink. Backup facilities like a shower powered by solar rechargeable batteries and composting toilets to relieve ourselves safely and in sanitary conditions. A way to cook like a solar oven or propane stove and a way to keep warm in the winter and cool in the summer. But how can this be done? Keeping warm is fairly easy with fire, but keeping cool is not really possible without electricity. It is not financially feasible for most of us to spend $30,000 on an off-grid solar system. And these days, many cities and counties will not even allow you to install solar unless you are tied to the grid. This poses a problem for many of us, but what about solar power supplies? These are our best option. The higher the wattage output, the more we can power without worry. 1500 watts is sufficient for most homes to power a small refrigerator, TV, air conditioner, but 2000 watts is even better. A unit that can power 2000 watts and has sufficient battery storage will power a refrigerator, air conditioner, and TV indefinitely if the power is used efficiently and sparingly. There are also alternatives to refrigerators like electric powered coolers that use a very small fraction of the power of a standard refrigerator. There are also alternative washing machines that can use as little as three gallons to wash an entire load of laundry when water conservation is necessary. We can power all of these alternative appliances with the Alcatel power supply and five solar panels used during the day. Today we are going to review the Alcatel power supply and we're going to see what it can do for you. Let's get to it. Just doing a standard power up of the Alcatel unit, 2000 watt unit. One thing I wanted to bring up is that it has a 1000 watt or 1100 watt input. When that happens, you don't want to put it on the same breaker as say like a, a large load item like an AC unit, a heater, or a refrigerator. All right, folks, it is 10.30 at night testing the product. It's used a little over 35% with 52 watt output powering my TV, DVD player, and Roku box. 
and it's been on for about seven and a half hours. Right, so we are testing the unit. We've got it set up to do two Jackery panels. It's coming in at 125 watts. Interesting thing about this unit, it's got this type, which usually comes with the EcoFlow. It's got the Anderson input, which is what I've got going right now with my Jackery panels. Doing a load of laundry with the Alcatel. This is actually my second load I've done with this unit. It works just fine. Making an espresso during the apocalypse. Because why not? Of course, the major one that everybody wants to worry about and is concerned about is the refrigerator. It is currently working just fine. Been in there for about Let an hour. Let me just reiterate real quick on the MC4 connector to Anderson input. I did test it on my Jackery panels, which already has an Anderson connector, and this one has an Anderson connector. Uh, it's just that it should... I already had the Anderson connection, so that's how I tested it on the Jackery panels. Window AC unit. Check. Window AC units use a lot less than central air. Say it's only around 300 watts, and given that this is a 2,000 watt unit, 300 watts is just a small percentage of what this thing can power. Imagine if you lived in the desert like me, and the power went out when it was 125 degrees outside, you might have to pack yourself into a small room, which would be the smallest room in this house, but the air conditioner will work and it will keep you safe and cool enough so that you don't essentially die of heat stroke. You can also do the same thing with a space heater, which I do not have, but space heaters can use five or 600 watts and it can heat up a room in a matter of a few minutes. Um, and once your room is heated up, you're not going to die of freezing to death, which is awesome. After testing this unit, I was unable to find any faults. When a YouTuber is doing a review of these products, our job is to find flaws, faults, and fails in each unit and explain it to our subscribers. I was able to do loads of laundry with a regular washing machine, my alternative washing machine. I could power a microwave, uh, make a latte, power the TV, DVD player, Roku box, computer, modem, lighting, alarm clock, refrigerator, and air conditioner several at the same time without any issues. All in all, I believe this is a great unit and is now one of my favorites. It has an easy to use and understandable di digital display. And to close out this video, I will show you the manual page by page and leave any links down in the description box if you are interested in purchasing this unit. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out. How's it going? How's it going? Going pretty good? Yeah? 
my little boy? Who's my little cutie? Who's my little cutie? Oh. I love you. I love you. Boop. Boop. <laughs> You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Mm-hmm.